Hello and welcome to this video on time series forecasting, where we'll be, we'll be discussing the uh, uses of the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function. So to summarize quickly, we have uh, the ACF, which is measuring a more comprehensive correlation between a certain value and uh, its lag at say t minus three. So this does include, if we talk about the correlation between these two, which is really including yt minus one, yt minus two, there is a certain dependency on uh, the previous value for uh, each of these. There's also a dependency over here, which is all included when we are talking about the ACF. Uh, measuring the complete correlation between a certain value at time t and a certain value at time t minus 3. With regards to talking about a partial autocorrelation, we are really looking at this direct relationship all by itself, assuming that none of the intermediate values are <clears throat> interfering in this relationship. So that's why it's only a partial autocorrelation. And it's really measured by, if we talk about a simple model, where uh, yt is given by our coefficients, beta 3 times yt minus 3. This is a simple autoregressive model. And uh, in, in this case, this is our coefficient that corresponds to yt minus 3. That coefficient is nothing but our PACF for the lack lag of three, we are getting a correlation or a partial autocorrelation function of beta three. So this, of course, changes when we are uh, using different models, our coefficient changes, we'll be adding error terms for uh, moving averages. So let's take a look at uh, how we utilize these plots in order to determine the order of our model. So what we have here is a data that has been synthetically generated. And you can see the ACF plot. This is a gradually declining autocorrelation plot, which is uh, typical of non-stationary data. And uh, this is indicating that uh, we can imply an AR model. So in order to determine the order of this AR model, we will look at the partial autocorrelation for the same series. And what we can notice here is most of the values beginning here are statistically insignificant as they come under the blue airband. We only have one value really at lag, lag one, ignoring the very first at lag zero. So lag one is uh, something that we can utilize as the order of our autoregressive model. That is to say, we would have any predicted value as a function of only the past value, only the past single value. Now, if we were to replicate this for a moving average model, our, typically our plots would be something reversed where you would have the partial autocorrelation moving more gradually. And uh, you would see some sudden <clears throat> sudden jumps or uh, a sudden shutting off in the ACF plot. We do have an example here where uh, there is a bit of shutting off going on in the ACF plot. <clears throat> and uh, really for the moving average, we would be considering the ACF plot to determine this order Q. Here, where it is really shutting off is, uh, at this point, we still have some pretty strong values. Although you have these intermediate, which are not really of significance. So yes, we, we could take this as uh, an order, considering that uh, <clears throat> our values after this are somewhat declining. But we could also go further down, and uh, if we do want to consider a higher range of values to obtain the moving average. We can go up to as much as eight or even nine and uh, give those values. You could have three, you could have eight or nine. 
So if this current example is really taken a look at, we, we do have a strong PACF as well, in, uh, in which case we would be really considering the ARMA model, right? So this is uh, what we, this is basically how we utilize our uh, ACF and PACF. More often than not, the partial autocorrelation is giving us the order of the autoregressive model and uh, the autocorrelation function plot gives us the order of our moving average model. 